Peacock 45, look what I have. A Daniel Defense Mark 18. Belongs to John. He is letting me enjoy it though. Has an SB A4 brace on it. Got a Trigicon MRO red dot. What else we got? We got, uh, you know, MBUS backup <coughs> polymer sights on it. We have, uh, let's see, who makes that? Magpul, the drum magazine. It's a 60 round uh, magazine we have not had any trouble with. Seems to work pretty well. Pretty interesting, huh? So anyway, it's a Mark 18 and it's Daniel Defense. And you know what it was made for primarily? Shooting watermelons is what I understand. I'm gonna take out three just just to start things off. How's that? <laughs> now I feel better. So is there anything left to shoot? How about what's in that package right there? Whoa, nice, nice. Bowling pins. <laughs> well, let's just go there and hit a red plate. Yeah, how about one in the middle? Smack. How about on the right? Too high. There we go. <laughs> yes, that is a handful of some power. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty pretty nice little piece. I'll have to say, I, uh, well, I was going to tell you I traded the muzzle loader for it, but I've already told you it's John, so I can't make up any stories, right? But uh, pretty nice. Appreciate y'all coming out, too, because... I'm really feeling tactical when I get this in my hands. Can I shoot a couple more times before we close out? <laughs> yeah, pretty funny, huh? That'd be a short video. <laughs> Bowling pins. Two liters. How about this paper? Oh, no, wait. Let's smoke some pot first. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. There must be something else. To, oh, how about a 12-ounce uh, can right there? <laughs> Took the top off of that one. <laughs> Let's take it over here and talk about it a little bit, okay? Because I could just shoot all night with 60 rounds at my disposal, couldn't I? Yeah, there's the one in the chamber. That one in the chamber the one we always have to remember if you're a, a newer shooter, okay? Or even if you're not. So yeah, this is the Daniel Defense uh, Mark 18. Uh, that's what they call it. And yeah, it, it pretty much is. Now, the military version, of course, the Mark 18. And, and of course, Daniel Defense builds those. But uh, this is a pistol, okay? This is not a rifle. If you're uh, you know, in the military, you have been in the military, you may have used a rifle much like this, but you had a real stock, right? Because yours was more or less what we would call in the civilian world a uh, SBR, short-barreled rifle. You could have any stock you want on it, right? And there's just, just a lot of information out there on these things. I'm not <laughs> new exactly. They have proven themselves really well in combat. A lot of information on them. And I have no personal experience you know, in combat with them or anything like that. But many people have. And uh, it has acquitted itself quite well for a short little you know, uh, rifle. Okay. Now, ours, John's, is a pistol, again, officially. But uh, this, if you didn't know it, the Mark 18 is extremely popular, uh, popular uh, special operations. Uh, military folks have been using this for a while and kind of in this configuration with a real stock on it because they don't have to do what we have to do to you know to, to have one with this type of length you know and uh, from all accounts everything I've read and I did a fair amount of reading on this when John bought it and we we're going to do video on it uh, many of you know more about it than I do you own them you you have them in different configurations it's just amazing how many people own these and have them set up in, in so many different ways. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm tactical just enough to be dangerous in terms of my knowledge. I like these things. I have, what, seven or eight ARs? Oh, no, wait a minute. That's before I drop them in the lake. But I used to have seven or eight AR-15s, so I like them in different uh, configurations. And this thing's really grown on me. John uh, has had it a little while, and I've been shooting it, and have had it out here a while, and. I'm uh, really liking it. I mean, to tell you, 
mainly this uh, SB, let's see, SB84 brace. It came with the SB uh, A3 brace, but uh, John put the, uh, the, the fourth generation on there, and it gives you a little more length. You got a little cheek uh, piece here and everything, and I'll tell you what, it, uh, it is not bad at all. I, I, it, it's not far from my other ARs, okay, in terms of feel. And that's one of the issues I've always had, as you can imagine, at 6'8", and so is John. But I can shoulder just fine, especially with one side up here, the red dot. So I am really uh, falling in love with it, I have to say. So I'm a little late to the game. You know, some of you all have uh, been configuring your Mark 18s all these different ways and, and shooting them for years. It, months at least and uh, you know, I, I am kind of late discovering this I have to say I just didn't really I have toyed with the pistol uh, ARs and everything but it's always a little too short and so uh, you know I, I want I want to like them but I can't I tell you what now I sort of can and this thing has such a wonderful reputation uh, it just really does like I say special operations have been using these testing them and, and using them and they just work even though they're very very short you know 10 and a half inches on the barrel this one's 10.3 i think and uh they had to work out the the dwell time you know in the gas system because it's a carbine length gas system but you got this really short barrel and of course we know we're clear and i'll start out there on the front end talk to tell you about a few things about the thing uh and, and again it's, it's like talking about a glock 19 or something you know all the information is out there uh, readily available, but I'll give you the basics of it, okay? Uh, the Mark 18, Daniel Defense. We all know Daniel Defense, whether you like them or not, or you think they're overpriced or not, or whatever, they make good stuff. They really do. They make a lot of it for the military, you know, for hard use, okay? But uh, but let's start at the, at the front of this thing, and just a couple of things. You've got, uh, I think, your proprietary uh, flash hider there that they use, suppressor, made of stainless steel, and it's got the nitride, salt bath, the finish, and all that kind of thing. The barrel's a government profile, 10.3 uh, inches, I think, and it's, of course, chrome line, and it's got the, I don't know, the nitride finish, or whatever they have. Just They do it the right way. In fact, Daniel Defense is famous for making great barrels. Okay, we all know that chrome lined. I think it's a one and seven twist, and it's just, again it's done the right way. I could use that phrase about a hundred times in talking about this rifle, because Daniel Defense knows what they're doing. I don't mean to uh, be an infomercial for them, but it's just a fact of life that it's hard to disagree with. You may prefer a different brand, and think some other companies do it just as well or even better, but you know it's hard to argue that uh, Daniel Defense they, they know what they're doing. Okay, so kind of the barrel, the short barrel. And what I was going to show you while we're out here, you know, the, there's a the gas block right there. And guess where the end of the barrel is? I think it's right there. <laughs> so you don't have much distance between the gas port there. And uh, we've done a video on that. And just quickly, when the bullet gets out there to that point and just past that gas hole in the barrel, it shoots gas up into that tube and it comes back here and it impinges on the bolt carrier, doesn't it? gas impingement system it pushes the bolt carrier back and feeds a new round all that kind of stuff that's where it gets its power right well that bullet gets to that point and and uh, re and, and that gas releases that gas that's behind the bullet up into the gas tube but then before you know it guess what it's not very long before that bullet is out the barrel because you've got about that much distance so uh the dwell time as they call it is is just different whereas if you had say that much length out there past the gas tube uh, or gas port it would be a little bit different so they had to tweak that a little bit just in the in the mark 18s in general uh, uh, for the military and everything they started out as i understand with a pretty large gas port to offset that problem they could have had just to make sure they're reliable and they were a little bit more violent in their action you know carbine gas length tubes uh, systems or ars with a carbine gas length are a little more they're not quite as soft shooting you know, as a mid-length or the full length. I think most of us know that. I've got all three. And, uh, and then with a shorter barrel, and you get more blowback. So that was an issue. But they, they tightened that up a little bit to where it's not so open. And, uh, and to enough to where they still are reliable. And so they've improved that over the last, whatever, two, three years, I think. And uh, But they're famous for being reliable, even with that short barrel. And... Uh, and also, let's see, so as while we're out here, we've got this rail system. 
uh, John's got the covers that came with the, the firearm and uh, those are nice they help absorb heat, heat and everything but these this rail is the uh, RIS 2 or the RIS 2 whatever uh, rail interface uh, system 2 it's you know has a great reputation uh, and is is really hard I think is what 6061 aluminum if that means anything to anybody T6 and has uh, proven itself in battle you know, uh, Daniel Defense is kind of famous for, for that rails on my SOCOM over there that I've had for a few years. The big old quad rail. Uh, it, it seems kind of large to us these days after all the slim rails, you know, and key mod and everything and M-Lock. But they still feel pretty good when you pick one up. It's like going back uh, in time. But I, I, it, it's been fun. On this one, I don't know. It feels good. You get a good grip on it because it's such a short firearm anyway. I kind of like it. I really do. Let me shoot a bit, a little bit, okay, before I uh, go on. And uh, let's put a regular magazine in it. How's that? All right. Mark 18. <laughs> Pretty neat. I have to say, a handy little piece of hardware. It really is. Let's bowl a little bit with it. Boom. About a hanging bowl. <laughs> And what about a two liter there? <laughs> nice. Uh, I see some more 12 ounces down there. <laughs> Short work. Oh man. How about a red plate over there? Pretty nice. How about a burn barrel? <laughs> Not quite full auto. Oh yeah, that we need to talk about the trigger a little bit, don't we? Uh, take that round out of the chamber. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> working our way back, the uh, this rail system again, Daniel Defense. Uh, is, 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 I, I don't know, could say they're famous for it. It's just really well made and uh, has been very successful. And it's the way it's bolted down, the way it attaches, so secure that uh, it's just it's just really well done the uh what else about this you've got uh, of course your beveled magwell you got the daniel defense uh grip on here and which includes this under part to the uh, trigger guard of course whether you like that or not you know uh it has let's see uh ambi uh you know safety on it which john has taken off because neither he or i you know like those at all they kind of get in the way and so we usually remove that but it came with it. Some people don't like the uh, polymer, you know, uh, lid there and uh, dust cover. And I'm not crazy about it either, but I guess it works. And, uh, but you got kind of a traditional lower on this thing. And, and of course, for you metallurgists out there, and I know most of you are watching, what is it, 7075 uh, T6 aluminum in both the lower and the upper. So, uh, you know, your better ARs and probably most ARs, you know, are made of that material. And uh, there's just the, the yeah, there's that trigger. That reminds me. Triggers just just mil spec came with it. It's nothing special. In fact, it's almost less than anything special. It's not a great trigger. Okay, that's why a lot of people switch them out. And that's probably one reason they don't really worry about that because a lot of people do switch them out, right? Everything's staked right. The castle nut, you know. And let me take it apart. It's probably nice and hot now. Aren't you glad I got it all hot? Aren't I glad so I can burn myself? Uh, yeah, check that out. Uh, as you can see, they, now I think this is what they call the grip and rip. I don't know, the Daniel Defense version of, a, of the charging handle. But it, uh, I'll show you, it, it, it actually takes some of the gas. It's designed to take it up into it and vent it. I believe it vents it off just a little bit Okay, because you do have more of a gas issue, especially if you're running a suppressor on one of these, uh, because of the shortness and everything, it, you just get more back through there. And so, not only that, but you've got a kind of a thicker, so it kind of blocks it a little bit from coming into your face and, and vents some of it, redirects some of that gas to the side. Okay, so that's that. And of course, you can tell the staking on the gas key. Uh, you know, and everything is magnetic, particle tested, pressure tested. Uh, that's just, you know, goes without saying with Daniel Defense. Uh, they do all that. You got an M16 style bolt, but you know, it's all tested thoroughly. 
And you know that involves, and I'm not sure I know everything about that, but it does involve X-raying. I think they they do a proof test round. That is a a proof test round is really really hot, hotter than you really ought to be shooting, and I don't know how hot. And uh, they fire one of those I think in the chamber of the barrel, and then they X-ray and test and make sure everything's okay. So they really test things. Uh, uh, not just Daniel Defense, but Daniel Defense does that, okay, for, for real. And uh, so you get a nice bolt and uh, you know, everything done right, all the right steel. And like I say, this is a little bit different charging handle. If you were shooting a suppressed, uh, you know, shooting suppressed, like if we were right now, we would probably notice a little difference if we changed out the charging handle, right? Because there's so many different uh, charging handles that you can put in these things that work without any trouble, right? So, pretty neat. Uh, all right, close that thing back up. Uh, all right, anything else that you're dying to know about the, just the mechanics of it that I don't know. Now, I brought out the uh, the old uh, Colt Commando XM177E2 there. Johns, this is made by Brownells. This one is kind of a remake of that. And of course, you can only get the purple ones from Brownells, but this is Johns. And you know, from you know, gosh, what the 60s, 70s, and the uh, 80s, you know, this was if you wanted a short AR M16 type rifle, uh, you know, this was kind of it, wasn't it? And uh, so, this Mark 18, in a way, is the current, I guess, evolution of, of that sort of thing a shorter, handier uh, firearm that still provides most of what you need. I, I, I read a line, what was it? Oh yeah, something like it gives you the striking power of an assault rifle with the compactness of a submachine gun kind of thing. So you get a really handy small firearm that does most of what you need to be done, you know, as anybody, but you know, soldier, uh, you know, I don't know, 300 yards and in, whatever. And uh, it's just, will do most of what a person needs and is extremely handy. Now keep in mind, if, it's, if we're talking military, you've got a regular stock on it, but uh, as far as length, it's not all that different, right? And uh, you've got most of, you know, the same stuff. You're probably more likely, you know, with have a suppressor on it, uh, not always, I guess. And, you know, lights and, and different, maybe, you know, lasers and different things on it. You, you see, I've seen some of you that have these things with, all kinds of uh, attachments. Uh, I won't. I won't use the old toaster joke. I mean, really, things that you know, really are useful if you're going into combat. Because uh, this is. A, it's not a joking, really, rifle or pistol in our case, but uh, they're just uh, used extensively and have been, and have really proven themselves uh, to be effective and handy and reliable. So. I'm impressed with it. I uh, really am. I've not been impressed with these really short ARs that much, but this one I have to say I like. Uh, not just because it's Daniel Defense. We know they make good stuff. Just any one of these that's in this configuration that fits me like this, it could be a difference <coughs> brace, okay, or a short-barreled rifle, SBR, that, you know, someone's gone through the paperwork on and created the same thing. It, either way, it uh, it's really handy. There's just no doubt about that. So... Uh, Pretty cool. I'll shoot a couple more times and uh, tell you some more lies. How's that? Now we got the red dot on it. I like a red dot on one of these, I have to say. Especially if you've got a little bit of a shorter uh, operation here, it, it does make it make it better in a lot of ways. Okay? You see the drum? I may put a couple rounds in that, see how that works. Uh, Magpul. Uh, John has had these a while. They seem to work. I don't think we've had a malfunction with them at all. And uh, put a couple more in so you get that lever, take the pressure off, pop around in, a couple more in it. There we go. Yeah. Like with some drums, you fill up and then you wind them up and all that kind of thing. This one, you're sort of doing that as you go along. There we go. And so it's not the smoothest to load, but it does just fine. You're getting 60 rounds, and so, you know. Doesn't matter if it takes you a little bit to, to get it loaded. <laughs> Once you do, you got 60 rounds. And, you know, that's not bad. So, in, uh, Mark 18, I'll shoot a couple more times. Maybe I'll put the drum back on it. Uh, one, one thing I'd like to say, too, again, a lot of people don't like firearms like this. You know, there's no wood, there's no steel. Well, there's steel, I guess, but there's no wood. And it's not a, 
M14, it's not an M1 Garand, you know, like your grandpa used or you did or something, an M14. But you know, uh, whatever the time period is, we want, well, everybody, you and me included, but thinking of soldiers and things they're going into battle with, whatever the best tool for the job is, you know, whatever that might be. If it's just aluminum and polymer firearm, the Mark 18 and whatever configuration works best, that's what we want our uh, fighting people to have, you know. Uh, if a Garand were the best thing uh, to have right now, they'd be using it probably, right? Or an M14, they still use M14. But yeah, just, just a little aside there, no charge for that. Uh, I like a Garand, I love a Garand and those kinds of rifles, big heavy rifles, bigger bullet and all that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, it's just just, just uh, inconvenient and not needed in most cases, you know. So, anyway, this is a pretty neat little rifle. It's very handy. And uh, let me shoot a couple more times if you'll let me do that, okay. You know, I do kind of like, I'm not crazy about drum magazines, uh, mainly because they're, they're cumbersome, you know, and they're large, and it's simple enough to switch out magazines. But that was not bad, not bad. We'll take a couple more shots and and to see what we can hit here, okay? I already shot my watermelons, didn't I? <laughs> oh yeah, let's go and hit a red plate. I notice the point of impact moving up a little bit, I think as the barrel heats up. And then, plus, uh, I, I get kind of a weird figure eight uh, look on that red dot, and I think it's my eye, the astigmatism. And I'm sometimes not sure which part I have to use on the target. Pretty nice though, pretty nice. Yeah, buddy, this thing is uh, it's ready. I, we've not had any malfunctions with it. Uh, John shot it, I've shot it. Uh, he really likes it. I really like it. Uh, just an interesting rifle. There's probably some things I, I forgot to mention, but uh, we'll do some more with it. John will, I will, whatever. And uh, talk about anything we forgot to talk about that we know you're dying to know about it. But again, it's uh, this is a pistol. Uh, classified as a pistol and has a brace on it and there are different braces available if I didn't make that clear uh, the military that's been using the Mark 18 uh, would not have had this kind of brace on it they would have a regular stock of course and in a, a variety of different attachments and it's interesting uh, just prowling around and browsing around the various uh, oh gosh I don't know configurations I guess you'd say because that's of course the thing that's so appealing about the uh, the AR-15 really world is there's so many different braces or stocks and grips, charging handles, sights and and uh, rails and flash suppressors and just everything. You can put a different lower on or a different upper and barrels and calibers, and bolt group, carrier groups. Uh, so they're just mix and match and you can set them up however you want to, can't you? And a lot of you again do it way more of that than I do. Uh, but I do like them, and uh, they're, they're, they're fun, and they're very effective. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you take a firearm like this, it doesn't weigh that much, and uh, with magazine of ammo, does not weigh you down, and you're pretty much uh, prepared, right? Pretty much prepared. Right now, a firearm like this is probably hard to find. I don't know, because uh, we're filming this during the great firearms and ammo shortage, right? So depending on when you're seeing it, this might all be over by the time you're watching this. <laughs> and it probably will be. So anyway, the uh, gutter empty. The uh, Mark 18 is pretty nice. I appreciate John letting me shoot this. Really do. Uh, he trusted me to fire this thing. I tried to get him to jump in here and shoot it. And he said he'll do that next time. But uh, he really likes it. And it's really grown on me. It, it really has. Like I say, this Brace Generation 4 is a little more length than the generation three 
and it it uh, fits pretty nicely and if it fits me okay it's probably gonna fit you right so uh, mark 18 Daniel defense uh, if you've got one tell us what you think okay life is good uh, fire. it's a long walk from where I had to shoot that oh man oh hey didn't see you guys there since you're here I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall, talongungrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips, so go check them out. Also, Ballastall, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water-soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So, Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.